Hello, this is TikTok. In this video, I will show you how you can play Microsoft Flight Simulator remotely, like you would with a cloud gaming service. Microsoft Flight Simulator is a highly demanding game, and you probably have a high-spec gaming PC in your room or office. But if there's nice weather outside and you want to enjoy the sun at the same time as playing on your gaming PC, there's a bit of a problem. You can't really take your gaming PC into your garden, or maybe you are not at home, but instead in another country and still want to enjoy playing on your gaming PC which is at home? Well now you can. We will build our own cloud gaming service using Zoom. If you enjoy the video, please like and subscribe. Let's get started. You've probably heard of these cloud gaming services such as Google Stadia, Xbox Cloud Gaming, GeForce Now and PlayStation Now. What we are going to create in this video will work similarly to them. Our gaming PC will act as our server, on which we will run the game on, and we will use a laptop to connect to the server PC to play the games with. This laptop, which we will be using, does not need to be powerful at all, it just needs to be able to run Zoom. We will start by opening Zoom on our server device and joining our personal meeting room. We will invite our client device to join the meeting. Once we have the meeting ready, we can launch Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now it's time to set up the remote control. This will enable us to control the server computer from our client computer. We will share our server screen and we will be able to see it on our client computer. Next, on our client computer, we will request remote control. A message will pop up on the server screen and we will need to press accept. Now the client computer is able to control the server's computer. To improve performance and to get a smoother gameplay experience, we will select the Optimize for Video Clip option. This makes Zoom deliver a higher frame rate and enable sound sharing, so we can hear the game's sound on our client device. Now we have everything ready, we can start playing. Let's have a go at one of these landing challenges. Let's try the one in the Cessna 172. While it's loading, make sure you have Virtual Controller open and enabled to be able to use the mouse yoke. If you don't know how to set it up, check out my video on my channel. Stop. We can now see that I can use the client computer to control the game, which runs on our server computer. Both of these computers have 1080p screens and you will notice that the quality is higher on our server computer. This is because Zoom is not able to deliver such a resolution in the Optimize for Video Clip mode, and therefore we receive a lower resolution on our client computer. We can see this when we go up to the Zoom menu, choose Zoom Ratio, and select Original Size. We can see that our output is smaller than 1080p. Therefore, our server is rendering unnecessary pixels which will put unnecessary strain on the GPU. What we can do to reduce this strain is to go to our graphics settings in Microsoft Flight Simulator and reduce our render scaling to the resolution that we are actually receiving. In my case, this is around 60%. As a result of this, we will have a higher and more stable frame rate, and this will not make any noticeable difference on the graphics we see on our client's computer. Now we can just fly the approach and land at the airport. We'll lower our flaps and stabilize on the approach. We'll reduce our power and touch down on the runway.
put our brakes on, slow down and stop. We have now landed. As we can see, we can easily play Microsoft Flight Simulator remotely. We have just scored 635,880 points in the landing challenge. Now we will see how our performance differs across different levels of internet connectivity after I tell you about this video's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Incredible Maths. Incredible Maths is a great app in which you can learn and practice maths. It has a wide range of content for different levels of abilities. You can download it from Google Play and get 30 days of Incredible Maths Premium free by visiting incrediblemaths.com forward slash tic tac. More details down in the description. Now let's get back to the video. Let's start off our connectivity comparisons with the Ethernet test. We'll start off with a quick internet speed test. On both devices we reach almost 110 megabits per second download speed and 10 megabits per second upload speed. Now let's see how this affects our in-game experience. As you can see, there is some compression which reduces the graphics quality and some latency which means we have a bit of lag, around 100 milliseconds. However, the game is still a pleasant experience, taking into account that we are playing on a different device than the game is actually running on. Next up is our Wi-Fi test. On our client device we now get 30 megabits per second download speeds and 7.5 megabits per second upload speed. Now let's see how this changes our in-game experience. Now we see that our compression has slightly increased and we have a bit more lag, around 400 milliseconds. The game is still playable and it's still fine to play Microsoft Flight Simulator on it. Time to make these tests extreme. Let's try with a weak Wi-Fi signal. We are now getting 1 megabit per second download speeds and 5 megabits per second upload speed. Let's see what happens. We see that Zoom is using a massive amount of compression and what we are seeing is really low quality. Also, our lag has increased drastically. Now our client is around 2 seconds behind our server. This makes it extremely hard to control our plane and it makes the game unplayable in this situation. To summarize, we see that this method can be used to play games remotely. However, you need quite a good internet connection as we have seen in our tests. Our gameplay was best on the wired connection and was still good on our 30 megabits per second Wi-Fi connection, so we could probably still play on a connection slightly lower than that. Comparing to cloud gaming platforms, we see that GeForce Now requires 15 megabits per second, Stadia requires 10 megabits per second, and PlayStation Now has the lowest speed requirement of 5 megabits per second. So our results are fairly similar to these services, taking into account that Zoom is not designed to be used in this case. Using Zoom to remotely play games works well for playing games like Microsoft Flight Simulator on a good internet connection, however it is not great for high-paced games such as shooting games because of the lag. However, this method solves the problem of not having to be in the same place as your powerful gaming PC, but instead be on a different computer, somewhere else, and controlling your main PC remotely. Another situation when you could use this system is when your friend has a game that you would like to play. Instead of having to go to their house, you can set up Zoom, like I've shown in this video, and enjoy playing their game remotely. I'm sure you will have many more ideas how you could use and adapt this system. So please let me know down in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please like it and subscribe. See you next time.